Hey everybody, this is Perch, and here's an interesting question I think is going to get me into a, a bigger topic. Um, and I, I think this is one of those ones where calm rationality maybe carries the day, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So I'm, I'm reading this mail here uh, from a viewer. Hey Perch, love your show. Thank you very much for all you do and all the entertainment you give me when I'm driving. I am a lefty. Your audience would probably call me a bleeding heart liberal. I don't know anyone uses bleeding heart liberal anymore. It feels like that's a, a term that's moved on, but maybe that's just me. I, I don't hear that anyway. Anyway, sorry, the mail continues. Um, I recently got into a large argument with a number of my friends and people I talk to online, several of which are current X-Men writers. Interesting. Okay, I, I can... <laughs> I know what circle you're in, as well as an uh, X-Men podcaster and an X-Men uh, site. The basic topic was that the name X-Men needs to be retired, that it's offensive, that it degrades women, people of color, and non-binary individuals. How, how does X-Men, how does X-Men impact people of color? I, I don't, I mean, I, I've heard the argument. I'm sure we all have around. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm I'm pausing on the mail for a second. I've heard this argument around uh, X Men being, um, you know, masculine because of the men business, and uh, I've never really agreed to this argument. And the, the, as you'll see, the the mail I got doesn't either. But but I don't, how does race play into this? X Men is is it? I I don't get that. Okay. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> I'm confused. I. I'm, I'm, I'm confused. Uh, other than it feels like when any kind of uh, word police kind of action or topic comes up, everybody just jumps to bundle in everything into it. It's, it's everything. It's race. It's bigotry. It's, it's sexism. It's, it's all the things. All the things all at once. Together. All of it. A thousand episodes. A th Sorry, I watched some Rick and Morty last night. Anyway, so the mail continues. I disagree completely, but I was surprised by the fact that I got so much opposition. And it wasn't just opposition, but I had people calling me a member of Comicsgate, even though they have known me for years, simply because I said changing the name of X-Men was a bad idea. I tried to use your approach of working through, I don't know if it's my approach, working through a list of basic concepts about why this was a bad idea, including changing the brand that had been established for decades, and the fact that X-Men, during its most celebrated period, was led by a woman. This didn't assuade anyone, however, who continued to call me sexist and a bigot. And eventually, I was kicked out of the group. So, two questions. One, do you think the name X-Men needs to be changed, or do you think they will change it? And two... Why are people so worked up about this? Thanks for all you do, Perch. Okay, a lot there. Um, first off, I'm not sure you didn't mention what you think the most celebrated period of the X-Men is, but I suspect uh, if you listen to the show, and, and you know, my favorite period of the X-Men was probably the one that when Storm was leading the X-Men, which started in X-Men Uncanny X-Men 201, and went for quite a while through... I forget. I always forget the the number, but it went through the mutant massacre, went through fall of the mutants, and um, and all the way through the uh, inferno, siege perils. And that was a badass time to be an X Men fan. So that was the X Men as led by a uh, black woman, Storm, and uh, and it was great. And it was funny because every now and then I remember people coming into the shop and talking about how uh, you know much later in the nineties. Um, that X-Men, you know, there could be women on the X-Men team. But nobody really cared about it. People would make jokes about it or comment about it, but it, it really didn't mean anything. I'm almost positive that Marvel themselves made some jokes about it in uh, uh, What what The, that comedy magazine that they did. I'm, I'm pretty sure Marvel has joked about it, but, you know, it was a brand that had been established for decades, and it didn't really matter. You, you, you could say, oh, this is... Uh, an exclusionary title, but then you've got a black woman leading the team. And there's been other women that, that have led uh, the X-Men, Jean Grey uh, being probably one of the more prominent ones. We've seen Emma Frost be a, a core player in all this. Um, so, I mean, I don't know that it matters, um, but it definitely matters to some. I have seen this reaction. 
I feel bad for you that you got kicked out of a group. Um, I know that there's a couple of ex-writers who are very, very worked up about this and uh, continue to bring it up and, and scream about it. Um, but, uh, you know, it's it's to me, it's pointless. And I want to, and, and just for a second, I want to point you to something completely outside of comics, but it relates to this topic. So there's an article in the New York Times uh, that came out uh, today. I'm recording this on November 16th. We're in the shadow of, of everything that's going on in Kenosha and the Kyle Rittenhouse. And, and so the news is all very polarizing right now. Um, but this article, it's a, an opinion piece. It's by Michelle Goldberg. And it's, it's titled, The Absurd Side of the Social Justice Industry. Now, for what it's worth, Michelle Goldberg is a, I, I don't know, I think you would probably bill her as extreme left-wing. She uh, supports uh, AOC and and definitely, definitely, be, you would never mistake um, Michelle Goldberg as, as right-wing or, you know, anything other than very progressive. But this article, she writes, talks about the absurdity of some of the language. And it's... Um, it basically, uh, I'll, I'll read two paragraphs of it, because it's important to note, we all get wound up in our little bubble of comics, that this discussion, of course, is going on everywhere. And increasingly, you're seeing people from the left wing, uh, from the progressive side of things, identify this stuff as absurd. So I want to read these, these two paragraphs here. It says, if you follow debates over the strident style of social justice politics, often derided as wokeness, you might have heard about a document called Advancing Health Equity, a guide to language, narrative, and concepts. Put out by the American Medical Association, the Association for the Medical Medical College's Center for Health Justice, this guide is a long list of terms and phrases that some earnest people have decided the others in the medical field should avoid using, along with their preferred substitutes. Some of these substitutions make sense. Healthcare professionals shouldn't be referring to people who have been in prison as ex-cons. Some are a matter of keeping up with the times, such as capitalizing black when talking about black people. Most, however, some, however, are obnoxious and presumptuous and would impede clear communication. For example, the guide suggests replacing vulnerable with oppressed, even though they're not synonymous. It's not oppression that makes the elderly vulnerable to COVID. And this, uh, this article goes on talking about this kind of language policing and, more importantly, how stupid it is, how counterproductive it is. And Goldberg's saying it from the perspective of, look, we just had an election a few weeks ago where the right wing made a lot of ground because of this nonsense. And doubling down on it is going to lose. And she's being uh, more or less pragmatic, saying this stuff is not helping us win. We gotta, it, it, and it's not even helping, it's, it's hard to say anything is, is really being accomplished here. It's, uh, and, and this is the piece, and now further in the article, that really caught my attention because it's so true with where we are with comics. It says, substantive change is hard. Telling people to use different words is easy. One phrase you won't find in advancing health equity is universal health care. The American Medical Association is an opponent of Medicare for all. The word abortion isn't there either. Although you could argue it would advance health equity if more doctors were willing to perform one. Why, why did, forget about the abortion piece, because it's just going to trigger other people. But what she's saying there is really interesting and, and I think compelling. And it's basically saying changing language, basically telling people you can't use that word anymore. You need to use a different word, like with the X-Men saying, oh, we're going to change the X-Men to X people. That's a very easy change. It's also a uh, change that is is worthless. If you change the title of the comic and you don't improve the story within, you have done nothing. In fact, you could argue you've caused negative damage. You've taken a well-known brand, a well-known IP, which whether you like it or not, X-Men is a well-known IP, just like Batman, Superman, and many other uh, you know, character names that have the word man or men in them. They've been used for decades and decades and decades. You may hate that, but the only way you're going to replace it is to spend decades and decades and decades building up your own brands, bringing something different to the table. You cannot wave a magic wand and say, now the words are different, they're words I like better, and I'm going to get the same success. 
The hard work is in telling a good story. The hard work is in giving characters real arcs. I've, I've done, I, you know, I've talked about it now in, in multiple videos. Storm is a perfect example. We saw the X-Men editorial and several writers talk about how Storm has been underserved, underutilized within Marvel, and they're going to change that. And we've now seen the results of that change. The results wa were that Vita Ayala wrote a one-and-done story sandwiched into the, uh, the X of Swords, Ten of Swords storyline, which included Storm stealing a knife that didn't matter, that everyone called, uh, not everyone, many people, called the best Storm story of all time, which was absurd. No, nobody seriously believed that. And it followed up with that by making Storm the Queen of Mars. Again, that did not matter. None of these things mattered. But it did give people a chance to say the words, this was the most important Storm story of all time. And it just so happens it was written by a trans non-binary person of color. Isn't that amazing? Hey, uh, we, Storm is now the, the ruler of a planet. Okay, those are nice words. But they're not, they don't translate to things. The hard work would be in telling a story. The hard work, honestly, would be in five years of stories, very compelling, well-written, detailed stories, of Storm being that leader of Mars and, and doing, you know, building out this new world and having amazing adventures. We're not going to get that. She doesn't have a solo title. She's somewhere into Sword, which is a title that seems primarily occupied by whatever, you know, Agent Brand has going on. That's what we have. That's the hard work. It would be writing those stories and building those things up. Changing the name from X-Men to whatever is simple and ultimately pointless. And when you have a, somebody on the far left who is pointing this out for, you know, the, the world in general, that these changes are, are, you know, are counterproductive and they're not actual change. This article by Michelle uh, Goldberg ends this way. Um, it says, uh, in the Washington Post, columnist Matt Bai described the document as an ominous development. I'd argue it's actually a powerful testament to where we are at the moment, and it should frighten you as much as it does me, writes Matt Bai. By the way, that's familiar too. If you're following the whole comic uh, dialogue, you look at you know YouTube channels and you see articles and everything. A lot of people are saying that this should frighten you. This is uh, this is thought policing. You know, that's the kind of stuff we're told. Michelle's response here, I think, is is uh, I agree with. It says she says it doesn't frighten me in a truly Orwellian situation. People would actually have to follow the new linguistic edicts instead of being able to laugh at them. But it does irritate me because it's so counterproductive. It's not scary, it's just ridiculous, is not a winning political argument. What she's identified here, and unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your, your perspective, um, very few other people are identifying, is these kinds of word changes, this thought policing, this, this, this quote-unquote wokeness, it's not accomplishing anything, and in fact, it's causing that side to lose. She, as a supporter of the left side, is 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 opened her eyes to say, I, "We're going to keep losing if we do stuff like this." And the the concern she has here is, if we want to actually make substantive change, if we do want to make these things happen, we have to put in the work. And what she's noticing is fewer and fewer people on her side are willing to put in the work. They just want to change the words and then scream at people over it. Well, in comics, if you truly want to add diversity, if you truly want to get these characters over, you're going to have to put in the work. Just making headlines, just saying these things, changing the name of X-Men does absolutely nothing. The challenge I think we're all stuck in here is you've heard this expression, I'm sure, you know, go woke, go broke. You've heard that, right? The problem is it, it's not, it, it doesn't really work that way. It would be quicker, better, we'd get to the result faster if people actually were going broke, but they're not. Truly broke would mean it's, it's dead. It's a, it's a colossal failure. The problem is these series and these items, they have have decades of brand equity. They limp along. They don't just go broke. They kind of hang in there. So we're stuck. We're, like, we're trapped on this treadmill where nobody's advancing. Nothing is moving forward. The, 
changing the words around is pointless. People identify, hey, you know, this is uh, this is not this is a story that there is there well not there is no story here. This is not actually progressing anything. You want us to uh, fall in love with Iceman? You're going to reveal that he's gay. You're then going to do nothing with him. He's just gonna just do nothing. He's just gonna kind of hang out there every now and then. He shows up in a panel, and then you're gonna be surprised or frustrated when people say, uh, "Yeah, I don't really care about Iceman." You, you didn't do anything. You didn't put in any of the work. You changed some words around. You, you retconned. You made a couple panels, and then you, you're like, "Yeah, and we're done." You did the easiest possible job. You didn't actually get anywhere. And unfortunately, it's not going broke because this whole series and a lot of these things continue to be propped up by decades of fan loyalty of people who are invested in this property. They're going to continue to fund it. Maybe over time, people slowly walk away, but that's going to take a long time. The problem is this isn't advancing any cause. And it's not dying either. It's just stuck. I, again, I, I'm I'm usually in favor of uh, of results, one way or another. Either go broke or massive success. Trapped in the middle is the worst possible option because that's just a, a slow bleeding death. I I feel bad again for you getting kicked out of the group. Um, not so, if if it's the you know the if it's the podcast and the website and the people that I would I suspect it is from your mail. I'm not surprised. The, this group is. Uh, uh, definitely, you you have one perspective you can agree to, and if you don't, they're gonna make up all kinds of things as, and stories about you and and ostracize you. Ultimately, their site is failing as well. Um, right now, if I look at the X Men comics up on Amazon, the the collections, they're dying. Brand new editions are debuting post two hundred and fifty uh, on the list. They're, they're not, not, nothing is doing particularly well. Unfortunately, it's not, it's not bombing so much that uh, it's going to die. It's not, like I said, it's not going broke. It's just not succeeding. That's, that's worse somehow. Um, to me, like I said, uh, you have to do the work. You can't just change the name. If your goal is to create strong, powerful, you know, well-rounded, female superheroes, people of color, whatever it happens to be, you have to put in the work to make those characters and those stories compelling. Just telling the audience that they have to love them, just changing the words around, will not get the job done. Period. And uh, I, I again, I, you can go read the, the Michelle Goldberg article. I, I think it's it should be eye-opening to people, particularly on the left, that you've got one of your most strident supporters saying, yeah, this is stupid. Anyway, thanks for the mail and thank all of you for listening.